Hello everyone and welcome back to another exciting knife review by George and uh, today we're going to talk about the Gerber LMF2 ASEK, the Air Crew Survival Aggress Knife. As usual, I would like to skip the first page because I'm going to put all this stuff inside the, um, the video description section of the knife review and um, we're going to dive right into the um, review of this knife. Now, for a start, I would like to just tell you that um, I paid a somewhat a dear price for this knife um, because I got uh, I kind of got ripped off. Um, basically, I got the knife from a place which uh, I think they don't really usually sell a lot of these knives, and um, when they do, they get a, they sort of like sell it for quite a high price. But I was very excited to, uh, to buy this knife at the time. Uh, so I just bought it even though it's uh, quite, a, quite a lot of money. So anyways, now here's the knife. Overall, the knife is, um, could be classified as somewhat uh, like a multi tool, but, uh, but it's, I would say, it's not good at anything in particular. And the quality of the knife is reasonably good, um, but it's not great quality. And uh, if you find right dealer, it's, I think today uh, with the new version of this knife come up, uh, my one is the slightly older version. With the, the newer version, you should be able to get a good price on this knife if you go to the right place or maybe buy it online. Uh, anyways, in detail, the functional blade design for this thing is, um, is for, designed for both utilitar utilitarian use and the emer emergency uh, evacuation use. The tip here is very strong and very thick. As you can see, it's a job point with maybe about a good three millimeters thick tip. And um, the ser serration here is designed to cut through materials like uh, basically you cut yourself, cut your way out of a, like a small airplane. That's what it's designed for. And ob obviously you can use it against some material like seat belts and stuff as well, if you have to. And the blade stock is quite thick as well. So it gives you extra strength. And um, of course you can use this as like a survival knife and the baton through wood and stuff. It can survive a lot of abuse. Uh, it's a sabered grind, um, so it should be reasonably good at splitting wood. And we'll just see it from this angle. Sabered grind. So, and the original knife, I believe this one, uh, it does. It's not marked on the Gerber knives usually, but um, but my one I got, which I got maybe over six, seven years ago. I I believe at the time it was 12C27 stainless steel. So um, it's recently been re replaced with the 420HC stainless steel, which apparently Gerber had some issue with the heat treatment with the old one. But um, uh, what we know about the steel is it's fairly corrosion resistant and it's very easy to sharpen. Now the knife is very strong and if you look up um, destruction test video of these um, LF, LMF2 knives, excuse me for that, um, you'll be able to find people like doing some all kind of abusive tests where they split wood with this thing and it can survive a lot of abuse. And there, there's obviously a low, refle low reflection from the blade due to the fact it's covered by the black and coating, black coating. And it, prov it provides some degree of corrosion resistance. And the uh, ergonomic of the knife is uh, reasonably good. Although um, in the negative section, I will mention in detail why I don't particularly like it in terms of ergonomics, but it's, it's not uncomfortable. It's just, it's, it's good enough. And the handle obviously for a sm like small to medium sized hand, which is um, me, um, I've got like still excess. So if you have big hands, you'll be, be able to find this knife um, having enough size to handle for you. And there is a hand guard on the back and front. Um, 
but this is not like one of those hand guards that protrudes too much. And if you baton it because the knife is so small, uh, you may have to baton on this end. So this is not going to get instantly destroyed, but we'll, we'll get to that soon in the review. And um, the handle traction on the knife is some, somewhat like a rubber, rubberized coating. So you can see it's like a shaped in like little round dots. And because it's rubber as well, it's just a little traction. And uh, it's, it's reasonably grippy for, for what it is. This knife is not a full-time construction, however. Um, I probably will make a video on why that is not that big a problem, depending on how, how the knife is designed. But uh, I went on the internet, I found some pictures on this knife, how the tongue looks like, which is this picture here. So according to this picture, the knife's tongue goes about maybe 60% of the length of the handle and ends here with a screw. And on the other end, it has got a screw as well. So um, there's a complete isolation between the two metal here. So if you were to cut, say electrical wires for some reason, your, your hand like touching the, butt, the, the, the knife butt, it's not going to get you electrocuted or at least for up to, um, as, I, as far as I remember, as far as I remember, it was 5,000 volts but don't quote me on that. Um, Gerber doesn't specify the, the voltage rated anymore. And um, where are we up to? So it's part tang, but it's a strong tang. Um, the butt cap here can be used as improvised hammer. Um, the way you use it is you're gonna use it like Let's see if we can demonstrate it in here. When you do use it, you have to take off this part, which I'm not going to do in the video, it takes too long. Use it as a hammer like this. So the flat portion here can be used as a hammer as you strike down a nail or something. And the glass breaker here is obviously uh, also able to be improvised as a bashing attack tool or some kind of um, like a skull crusher should you have to use it. And um, if you look at this thing, it's really, really huge. It's way bigger and heavier duty than your stereotypical um, glass breakers, which is just a tip. Um, we're talking about these things like Microtech. Um, you know, Microtech have like uh, automatic knives having uh, like a, a glass breaker on the end. This thing is way bigger and I believe the, hev the heavy dutiness of this thing is, is, is why it can break plexiglass because plexiglass is tougher and won't break very easy. So we're coming down to the next page. The holes here I will be able to um, they allow you to lash this thing onto a, a pole so you can use it as a spear. Of course, I don't really, I don't, I don't really imagine anyone using the knife as a spear, except I've seen Rambo using it that way. Uh, but it is an option there and it somewhat reduces some little bit of weight for you as well. And of course, that's a lanyard hole, if you're wondering. Um, the back of the knife is not like a, they didn't actually make this super smooth edge, but obviously they used some kind of maybe water jet cutting um, machine to cut this blade stock and they didn't smooth out the edge, but it's, there is a 90 degrees an angle in here. If you're wondering if you can use it as a, uh, like a fire starting rod, a fire striking uh, blade. Now the sheath, the sheath is actually very well made. It's actually uh, made in Vietnam, or at least the old model was. And um, for a start, you got this very reverse carry, reverse carryable sheath. It's you can carry it this way, or you can carry it that way, because the sheath is just looking the same uh, both ways. And uh, if you put this knife in the in the sheath, as we'll demonstrate to you now. 
uh, this thing already holds the knife very tight in there, so it's not gonna come out easy. And the other thing about it is that there is extra security if you if you want to use that to secure the knife even more. Uh, the reason there was so many extra security, uh, it's very actually very hard to tighten these guys sometimes. Uh, the reason th they are designed this way is because this thing was designed for pilots. If they have to jump out of an airplane or something, they don't want the knife to fall out and, and stab the pilot, for example, during parachuting. And uh, there's the multi-way carrying, carrying options. So you can see, you can obviously strap these two straps onto your leg. And um, if that's not what you like to do, you can also uh, use Molly uh, compatible um, attachment on the back. So if you, you're serving in the army, you, you probably know what Molly compatible means. So you can attach the knife on the, on the, on the vest if you want to. And um, so that's, that's very nice in terms of uh, carrying option. And the drainage on the sheets as well. That's not like a, something that you might not notice, but like uh, because of the sharp, integrated sharpening device here, uh, there will be some degree of uh, drainage if the water gets into the sheets. Obviously, it's going to allow the water go escape. And um, the knife can be inserted ambidextrously. So I already mentioned that. Uh, this thing is a sharpener uh, integrated into the sheath and um, you basically what you do is uh, would be ideal if you just take um, this this sharpening this this side of the uh, sheath off and then you take the knife and then you put it into the sharpener and then just uh, go using it this motion it will sharpen the knife instead of in a quick but maybe a nasty way i don't prefer this kind of uh, sharpening mechanism but i guess it's better to have a sharpener than not if you're in the field and um, the construction of this um, sheets according to the internet uh, sources i find the material used in here was uh, fire retardant so that means, say, if uh, well, it's probably more useful for pilots, if the pilot was in the cockpit and they were stuck and there was a fire, um, and they're trying to get escape and stuff, these materials will usually not melt or get set on fire so easily. And um, this the straps here, if you pay attention, uh, close attention. You can see there's some like little dots in there. That's what it is, is um, somewhat like a stitch made of rubber. So this stitch rubber into this thing, for what I believe is extra comfort for when you're carrying uh, this knife onto your, your, your clothes. And because nylon, the, the nylon uh, material here is quite, they're quite abrasive. They're going to wear your clothes out and they're gonna kind of grab into your, your skin if you are like wearing shorts. The rubber there increases the, the traction as well as the comfort. And um, the paracord cutter here comes with the knife. And um, not only it comes with the paracord cutter, it's got like this sheath, um, which I really like. It's you can probably put something like a sweet salmon knife in there if you don't want to carry this thing. I'll get to this soon uh, because I don't really like this damn thing. Um, but it's it's at least giving you a good porch. Oh, and um, this blade here, as you can see, it's secured by the screws. They can be taken off and um, you can rotate this blade and they, you can use it um, because you're rotating the blade, which just mean you can use the new fresh side of the blade. I don't know if um, the Gerber company had made an upgrade to their particle cutter. Now, to the negative points. For a start, this blade was just so uh, 
blonde when I first got it. That's the experience I get with a lot of Gerber knives. They're just simply not that sharp out of the box. And they use steel with which they don't specify of what's, what sort of a composition. I've uh, actually dropped this knife, so now it's actually got like a somewhat like a decent edge. But when I first got the knife, it doesn't cut paper like this. I stopped this knife and now it's, uh, it's reasonably decent. And um, so something to, to know if you do want to buy a Gerber, they're not known for being very sharp. Not like Spyderco or Benchmade. And um, the edge angle on this thing is wickedly, wickedly big. I would say probably about 25 degree on each side. So, but they did like a polished, polished style, uh, polished blade edge for some reason. Anyways, and the blade is, um, this knife steel is 12C27, or at least the older model. Um, they don't hold a very good edge. I've uh, found like it just, but then on the opposite side, you, you certainly get a better, easier, easier uh, to sharpen this thing as well. And uh, this knife, obviously you can't take it apart if you have to maintain the, uh, if you have to service the knife or clean it. And next point with the blade stock. The blade stock is very, very thick. So if you want to cut things like, so small things, it would be hard to like sort of cut slice an apple or anything like that. And um, the the entire knife uh, with, with the sheath is not a light knife. So if you are sort of thinking of buying this knife for sort of outdoors or camping, it's not the ideal knife for you because there's a couple of features here you, you probably won't find very useful and it will have the, the heaviness due to the, the due to the glass breaker and the hammer here. And um, the comfort of this hand, comfortness of this handle, I would say it, okay, looking at here, you get like this little, this little uh, groove on the other side, the same. Uh, that groove there is sort of uh, made to sort of uh, accommodate a, a pole if you uh, strap a pole onto the thing. But having done that, they sort of made this thing kind of like a weird shape in terms of handle. As you can see, the, um, it's kind of quite square in here and like missing material in there. So to me, it's like using it, this knife in an extended sort of um, period of time, I won't find it very comfortable because it feels somewhat boxy. Um, and also the hammer feature and the glass breaker is not, not going to be very use, easy to use. Um, say for example, I don't know how many people have to use a hammer when they go on camping or something. And uh, this is not exactly a very well designed hammer. You know, you can improvise it as a hammer, but that's, that's it. It's not really a, like a hammer hammer. And this blade is not very long five inches so if you want to chop through wood or something batoning it's not ideal and if you do baton um, wood with this knife and the batoning on this end if you hit the the edge here uh, you will probably break the rubber i've seen people doing that and breaking the rubber coating here if that bothers you and the sheath uh, this this knife has so many retain, retain, retaining mechanism here. So talking about this clip and then these two um, straps. So if you are a civilian, you don't have to really use these two guys, but even just using this thing, drawing the knife is it's a little bit mission. It's not easy. So if you have to use it in an emergency, I feel like that could be a problem potentially. And the paracord cutter, this is, this is the downfall of this knife. Um, I've tried to use this thing to cut like uh, some clothes and stuff, it doesn't work at all. And this thing is like, uh, this entire knife, looking at USA made, 
Vietnam made and this is China made. Um, I'm not proud to say that this thing is the, the worst feature of all them all. Like it doesn't, it doesn't cut well. I get, get paper stuck in there, you can see. And um, it's just a cheap quality thing that they put in there as a gimmick, in my opinion. I don't know how you can expect to save anyone's life with this if you if you're a pilot or something. Um, so that's that's a that's a big downer. And um, positive things based on my speculation, the glass breaker is just so heavy and um, it's sort of designed for for breaking sort of very very strong glass. Like I'm thinking tempered glass won't stand a chance against this thing. And the flexi glass, of course, this is designed for breaking pretty much all glasses except the bulletproof glass, I would say. And um, now, rubberized handle for shock absorbing during the batoning. So this, of course, is a kind of like a very, it's not actually super rubberized because you can feel very, very hard texturing, hard structure inside it. Whatever material they used, I'm thinking something along the line of uh, FRN. And the stitches on the, on, the, on the strap here is also very, very comfortable. I feel it's, it's just a nice touch in there. That's, that's well done on Gerber. I, I don't know how, this, how well this thing will hold in the hard use though. Couple of negative points. The serration is not a super useful feature in terms of survival use. Um, I don't think Gerber offers this knife in a straight edge only configuration, but I, I, I personally, I enjoy um, using the non serrated knife. The straight edge uh, is just gonna be doing everything the serration can, probably more. And the black oxidized uh, coating on the blade here is it's not not a very durable one. As you can see, just taking a sheet, taking a knife out of the sheath, it gets gets it scratched up very easy, and you can see the metal already. And uh, sheath, the the carbide sharpening system. I just don't really like this style of sharpener. You can you can probably argue that they they are easy and um, easy to use and stuff. I I guess that's true. But um, I prefer like a small sharpening stone. They're just way easier to use. I don't think this thing sharpens serration very well either. And uh, the pouch. I, I think this is a good pouch, but it's not very, very big. Excuse me, not a very big one. It would be nice if this knife has like a pouch on the sheets that you can carry, say, small multi tool or sharpening stone or something like that. Uh, anyways, this is a picture of the knife um, in terms of the, the internal structure. Final notes of the knife. Um, it's a military issue. Basically, I think the USA pilots are actually using this knife right now, or if not, maybe perhaps early on they were using it. and. Um, and so I, I think it will be, it is pretty reasonable to use the sort of relatively cheaper material like the, the 12C27 stainless steel or the current version has the 420HC steel because the price of the USA or any military equipment, they're going to have to try to put the price down so that they, they can afford to buy this for everybody. But I think the knife and the sheath is all very nice. But they got someone to design a not not so, such a nice. The design of this thing is a little bit of fail, I think. Also, the execution of it just simply makes it worse. Everything here is rather poorly poorly made, and um, for the for the cutter here to actually work properly, they have to align perfectly, and that's just not something that uh, makes it work. It doesn't work. You can see that. The cutters are not really like touching each other very, very much. Anyway, so it doesn't cut very well. But this knife also has a lot of features like the glass breaker and the hammer. 
boats are not something that you will use mostly in your camping trips because you don't have to break so many glasses in your camping trip or use the hammer. That brings us to uh, the competitive option of this knife, which is the Gerber strong arm, which is, I think, they're basically using the strong arm to sort of target the civilian's um, market because it, the strong arm, uh, I don't have a picture of it, it's a strong arm um, offered by Gerber also. It doesn't have a very heavy hammer here and um, it's got like a small glass breaker, but it reduces a lot of weight. Otherwise, most construction looks similar between this knife and the strong arm. So I would say if you like this knife and you do, you do use it and go camping with it, maybe get the Gerber strong arm instead because it looks similar but just has better features and um, lighter weight. Otherwise, thank you very much uh, for watching this video and uh, I hope you had a good time. I'll see you next time.